Just a couple of brief announcements. Today, after Mass, we will have exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. So those of you who wish to remain to adore our Eucharistic Lord, you are welcome to do that. That will last until 12.30. And once again, we'll expose the Blessed Sacrament in the evening at 6 p.m. and repose the Blessed Sacrament just before the 7.30 uh, evening Mass is to begin. And the purpose for this is not just for our own benefit, but especially to pray for peace uh, in Europe uh, between Russia and the Ukraine. And, you know, there's potential that other countries may get involved. So we want to pray for a quick resolution to this and hopefully no more lives will, will be lost on account of the conflict that is going on there. And just a reminder, we are now permitted to give Holy Communion on the tongue. Those of you who wish to receive on the tongue, we ask that you come up after everybody else has received. It's a little bit hard to know when that's going to happen. Um, we encourage you to kneel if you are receiving on the tongue. It just makes it easier to um, uh, refrain from touching people's tongues. Um, those of you who are in the hall, I think for the sake of, of efficiency, it would be good if you could come into the church for communion as well as when you receive your ashes instead of having our extraordinary minister walk over there, which takes time. So uh, those of you in the hall, just come to the church. We will um, have the distribution of the ashes right after the homily. I will just bless the ashes and we will distribute them and come forward the same way that you would for Holy Communion and um, we can do the ashes on your forehead as we have done prior to the pandemic. In today's Gospel reading, our Lord is basically saying, you know, if you're doing good things like fasting, um, don't make a show of it. In other words, we're called to be humble and we want to gain heavenly riches not worldly honors, not worldly praise, not worldly goods. I actually wanted to focus on today's first reading from the book of the prophet Joel. And notice how he says, return, even now says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. So it's a call to repentance. And, you know, as we undertake the season of Lent, we're supposed to focus in three areas to intensify our prayer life, our spiritual life, practice some sort of self-denial, and to engage in more acts of charity, whether it's towards individuals in your home or, or to the poor or giving more to charitable organizations, whatever it may be. And all of these things is intended to help us to become better persons and ideally to become less sinful. So... It will benefit our relationship with God. It will benefit our relationship with the people around us. And it will benefit us ourselves. We will feel better. The reality is that when we sin, we offend against God and we're separating ourselves from God if we commit a mortal sin. So we, through mortal sin, we separate ourselves from God. And basically when we do that, we're saying, you know what, God, we don't want you to be God over us. We don't want to obey your commandments. We want to be our own God. We want to do our own thing. And we want to make up our own commandments or our own laws for our own lives. And basically God says, okay, go ahead. And when we end up doing that, eventually we realize we're just bringing misery and disaster upon ourselves. And if sin is kind of something commonplace in society, it brings misery and disaster upon all of society. So when we repent of our sins or when we undertake these Lenten penances, we're not just doing it for ourselves, but we're doing it for everyone. We're trying to show God that we repent, that we want to come back to him. And by our acts of self-denial, we're also helping to atone for the evils that our sins have caused. So there's a real purpose to our fasting, our abstinence. And it's good to, you know, write down your Lenten resolutions to take it seriously. You know, some people, they just come for Ash Wednesday, they receive their ashes, and they may, might make a few very vague resolutions, but they, they don't really stick to it. So try to take Lent seriously. 
because when we distribute the ashes, you know, one of the things that we could say is repent and believe the gospel. Well, we do believe the gospel and we are somewhat repentant, but I like the other one that says, you know, remember that you are dust and onto dust you shall return. In other words, we're going to die. And we need to be prepared for that. We don't know how it's going to happen or when it's going to happen. And, you know, often people, when they get sick, they're tempted to doubt God's love or to despair. Or even some people get angry with God. Why would God allow this to happen to me? But the reality is one day we're going to die. Are we going to get angry when it's actually the time for us to die? If we are, then we're not in a good state because we're not going to be having the right attitude towards God when we appear before his judgment. So we need to be reminded of our death. It's inevitable. We need to be reminded that we can't bring the things of this world with us. Whatever earthly honors we've received, well, they're, they're going to be gone. All that remains is our faith, our level of love, love of God, and love of neighbor. This is the most important thing. And our Lenten observances helps us to do that. So we need to repent. We need to turn away from our sins. We need to turn back to God. We need to focus on God. You may have noticed the uh, image of the face of our Lord taken from the Shroud of Turin. It's just a temporary thing for, for Lent. I thought it would be good for us to focus on our Lord's face. And the Shroud of Turin, it's believed to be the burial cloth of our Lord. All the evidence seems to be pointing to that. And in recent times, the scientists examining it, they're finding out more and more new things about it, like very miraculous things. It's incredible. Um, you know, some of you on your cell phones, you have, uh, when you take pictures, there's the possibility of doing kind of like action shots. It's like you have just a slight little bit of motion, not a full video, but I can't remember what they're, they're called. But um, anyways, apparently on the shroud, that's what it's like. There's actually, they've detected like there's movement in the sense that there's like different um, stages of our Lord moving his hand as he was resurrecting. So the theory is that when he resurrected, he emitted energy or light and, and impressed it on that, that uh, cloth, the shroud, and so we have his image. And if you recall the apostolic letter from our Holy Father regarding the rosary, uh, Pope John Paul II, he issued that apostolic letter on the rosary. And one of the things that he said then when we pray the rosary is we should try to contemplate the face of Jesus through the eyes of Mary. And I think we need to contemplate the person of our Lord during the season of Lent, and we need to focus on his sufferings and his death, which the Shroud of Turin reminds us of. And by means of his sufferings, he shows us the extent of his love for us. And when we realize that he loves us so much, we, we would be less inclined to offend him by committing sin. So meditating on his sufferings, meditating on his passions is extremely good for us. And the other thing I wanted to say is that, you know, what did Jesus look like? The closest we have to knowing what he looked like is the Shroud of Turin. So let us contemplate the face of our Lord. Let us grow in our love of him and let us repent of our sins which so grievously offend him.